let us take up the 11th question in the in the sharepoint quick questions and answers video series what is the concept of features in sharepoint right now let's first define what is a feature feature basically helps us to activate and deactivate functionalities in sharepoint right so uh, for instance you know you have 10 or 11 functionalities in your in your website and the user only wants to activate three or four of them he can just go to a button and just go and say activate and deactivate and the sharepoint and the feature or the functionality will be activated and deactivated depending on what the user has done right for example let me show you some default features given by sharepoint now this page the sites features page i have got it from the site settings and we and you need to click on site features now there is a feature called a steam collaboration list and you can see that there is an activate and deactivate button so if you say deactivate it will just deactivate the feature and it is you will no no more be able to see uh, collaboration activities on your site on the other hand you can just go and click activate and it will activate the team collaboration list feature and you can use it in your uh, website so what we'll do now is that we will try to activate and we'll try to make a simple feature first deploy it in the site features uh, in the site features list and then activate and deactivate and see that how features are actually implemented right now before we move ahead and we talk about features let's let's look into some couple of fundamental things which we need to understand about features first things features needs to be copied into the features directory of the template of the of the templates features directory so basically you can see that this is the directory of features right and you can see that every of this directory are nothing but features that's the first thing the second thing is that there are two xml files feature.xml and element manifest manifest.xml using these two xml files sharepoint runtime understands what is the name of the feature what it what it should do where it should activate that feature etc so if you go to any of the feature for example now this is a sharepoint feature enabler you will see that there is an element manifest.xml and a feature.xml so these two files are essential now feature.xml basically identifies a feature in other words it has a description about the feature well element manifest.xml talks about how this feature will implement where this will be displayed and etc etc now when we activate and deactivate a feature there are certain events which are released out or a certain events which are broadcasted for example when you activate a feature it has something called as an activate feature event it, it releases, releases out something called as an activate feature uh, feature event in the same way when you deactivate a feature it it releases out something called as a deactivate feature event now what you can do is that you can capture this event in a in a dot net assembly and do some kind of custom uh, custom implementation so when you click on a deactivate button it releases out the deactivate event when you click on the activate it releases out something called as activate event right now what we'll do is that let's go to let's do some kind of implementation in this uh, sample project what we will do is that we will enable a feature and uh, what will have what what this feature will basically do is that once we enable this feature it will pop up a drop down over here it will pop up one more link over here saying custom page and when you click on that custom page it will go to this page called as a simple page code behind dot aspx this is the same page which we had coded previously in the previous question so what will happen is if somebody clicks on the uh, activate uh, if somebody activates this feature this feature what we are building now it will create extra link here saying go to custom page when we click on that go to custom page it will come to this page and if anybody deactivates it it will be removed from this link right so as we discussed previously the first thing we need to do is create those two xml files so here's i have the feature.xml and the element manifest.xml now for the features.xml file one of the important uh, things things which it needs to have is a unique guid because sharepoint recognize a feature uniquely by using the guid so the first thing you will find in the feature.xml the id is the guid in order to create a unique guid what you can do is that you can click on tools go to the create guid uh, create guid menu and say create new guid copy it and then paste the value inside the curly brackets into the id or id property of the feature the second thing which we have talked about is that feature 
exhibits events. So two events which it exhibits is the activation and the deactivation event. So for that, you need to specify the assembly and the class name which will handle those events. And remember that whatever assembly and class names you are going to provide needs to be registered in GAC and the public key token should be given here. So the second thing which you need to take care is who which assembly will handle the event. So for, uh, for example, over here I am saying that CLS feature receiver class will handle it. Now if you look at the CLS feature receiver class code, this is a custom class basically. The CLS feature receiver class inherits from the SP feature receiver. And what I have done is, I have overridden the feature activated event and the feature deactivating event. In the feature activated event, what I am doing is, I am first getting the reference of the site. Now, SP web object is SharePoint, uh, SharePoint object which, which actually references a site. Right? When I say a site, I am going to say a site like the learn SharePoint site. So the first thing what I've done is in this feature activated event is I've got a reference to the SP web object by using the properties uh, class and I've changed the site description and then updated it. So whenever anybody activates this feature, this code will run and it will change the description of the site to something saying click on the site action to see how custom page is displayed. And it also changes the site title. And when somebody deactivates this feature, I am changing the site description to something saying custom page display is disabled and then I'm calling the update. You can get this source code on questpondvd.com and if you have bought the DVD, you can get this source code over there. So the first thing what we did is we we have put in the feature.xml. We have given a unique GUID by using the tools create GUID. We have specified the receiver assembly and receiver uh, class and the, in the receiver feature, we have overridden these two, uh, two events that is feature activated and feature deactivating and over there we are just changing the site, the title of the site. Now the third, imp the last important point which feature.xml has is it points towards the other XML file called as the element manifest.xml. Now the elements manifest.xml answers two questions. One is where will this uh, feature be activated? I'm going, to, I'm going to say the location of the feature and second, what will this feature do? So you can see that we are specifying over here saying that this feature will be activated in the site actions toolbar. So basically we are talking about this location. So this feature will be activated here. And second, what it will do? It will basically go to the URL called as the simple page code behind. That is this URL. Right. So we have, we have coded our two XML files. We have coded our behind code. And now it's time to go and deploy this feature in the SharePoint uh, in, the, in the SharePoint runtime. So the first thing what we need to do in order to deploy this feature in the SharePoint runtime is that we need to copy, we need to create a folder I'll say first in the features directory of SharePoint and copy these two XML files which we had created now element manifest.xml and feature.xml. Once we are done with that, we need to use the STS ADM utility which you will find in the bin directory of 12 to install this feature. So you need to go to the Visual Studio prompt. When I said uh, not to the Visual Studio prompt, I'm sorry, to the bin directory and run STS ADM hyphen O. O means operation. And we need to say install hyphen O install feature file name SharePoint feature enable slash feature.xml. Now this SharePoint feature enabler folder is nothing but what where you have copied your XML files. So that is this. So now what SharePoint, uh, what STS ADM will do is that he will install this feature in the SharePoint runtime. So 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 I pressed enter, and you can see that it's it's telling me operation completed successfully and the feature is now been enabled. So let's go now and see if this feature has really been enabled. Go to site settings, go to site features. And you can see that there is a new feature added here called as go to custom pages. Now it has named it named the feature as go to custom pages because we have given the title as go to custom pages in the feature.xml. Now what I will do is that I will say activate. And once I have activated it, you will see that there is an extra link which has been created in the uh, site actions toolbar called as, called as display custom dot pages, display custom pages. 
Now, if you click on that, you go basically to the, uh, you, you basically go to the simple page code behind. And second, as soon as I have activated it, it has changed my site title. So you can say that the site now has a custom page display because in your feature.cs, you had written the code to change the title. Now, what I'll do is that I'll go and deactivate it back. So let's again go to site settings and let's deactivate it. Once you deactivate it, deactivate this feature, you can see that it has changed again the site title back to its original title. Right. So now if you activate it, it has again changed back the site title to saying that the site now has custom display. If you deactivate it, it again changes back. So in this way, the activation and deactivation events are fired from the assembly. Right. So in this way, we have activated, uh, we have created a simple feature, deployed it, and we have seen that how it works in a very simple, easy manner uh, and gives us gives the user a very rich experience. I hope that this uh, features uh, video was useful. And in the coming, uh, coming videos, we will be doing some more practical and complicated uh, implementation about features.